Hello, welcome to the James Cooley Show. It's your life, and man, I am so excited to have this guest on. He's coming from overseas, coming from Australia, Todd. Coming from Australia. So we're going to have an absolutely fantastic show today because I'm getting the opportunity to chat with this great man and all the great things that he's doing in Australia, not just that, but all over the world. That has so to be a record there. for the guest that's uh, been the furthest away. <laughs> yes, I mean, uh, I, I think Australia is the, the furthest that we done had, man. We done had England, we done had uh, uh, Germany, but, uh, you know, Aust Australia, man. And this guy is so exciting, Todd. And you're going to see a lot of things that, that he does, not just with the game of basketball and how he teaches uh, these young men and young women the game of life with the tool of basketball so todd i tell you let's get the radio portion started let's get it started and so we can get this a uh, great uh, guest on the show today it's your life is sponsored by james jc cooley life is a series of circles and cycles phases and stages these are your experiences that teach you the lessons of life you can either ignore them or embrace them. Welcome to the James Cooley Show. It's your life. James is a motivational speaker, author, military veteran, and founder of the James Cooley Foundation. James is here to equip you to strive for greatness and to overcome adversity. It's time to get equipped today for the challenges of tomorrow. Now here's the host of It's Your Life, James Cooley. Hello, welcome to the James Cooley Show. It's your life and wow. Man, we got an absolutely fantastic guest, Todd, all the way from Tasmanian, Australia. You know, wow, that's this, awesome. Oh, man, this guy is so fantastic. He's doing so many great things, working with our youth, working in, in industry, I'm talking about an entrepreneur, a whole lot of things, man. I'll tell you, wherever you're watching this or listening to this uh, platform, it was on E360 TV, YouTube. LinkedIn, StreamYard, or over 35 other platforms. Uh, all you have to do is go to the comments on that portion. If you want to call in, just call into the radio at 1 866 577 2473. Wow, man. Todd, I, 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 can't, I can't take it anymore. I got to get this guy on, man, because I'm excited, man. I remember my Australia days, and he's he living it every day. You know, so. Uh, let me tell uh, our audience a little bit about uh, this great, great guest, uh, Tony Moore. <laughs> you know, I have had the pleasure of chatting with him uh, over the last, uh, I guess, a couple of months, and uh, a, a great, great guy. You know, I'm still trying to figure out how how did he settle in Australia. So that's one of the questions I'm asking. But let me tell you a little, little bit about him. a decorated United States Navy veteran. Born in New York and living in Australia since 1988. He is the founder and CEO of Hoops for Life and three other businesses in, in the medical device, equipment, infant formula, commodity trading, and so many other things. Recipient of the Duke of Ellington Award presented by His Royal Highness Prince Edward, Earl of SM, KG, GVCO for over 30 years for his magnificent work that he's been doing uh, over in Australia. Um, he's just doing so many things. Uh, Who's for life? I'm going to bring him on, and he's going to tell us all about this, these great programs. So, um, again, if you want to be part of the conversation, just go to the comments on whichever platform you're watching on or call into the station, and we'll get you on. How you doing, Tony? Welcome to the show, my friend. Uh, thank you, Dr. Cooley. I appreciate it. appreciate it very much. Man, I've been looking forward uh, to this conversation for quite some time now, and I, I'm glad that I, I got you on because uh, uh, the things that you and I have talked about and all the programs that you're doing over in Australia and also, you know, getting uh, some of the kids uh, sent over to America to go to school and get the education, college education. We're going to talk about all those great things. But before we even get started, can you tell our listeners and our viewers uh, where you're from, a little bit about you, and what, uh, I mean, some of the things that you're doing right now. Yeah, yeah. Uh, like you said earlier, uh, <clears throat> New Yorker born and bred, um, and then I 
eventually ended up in the military, like yourself. <laughs> so join the U.S. Navy, go see the world, as they say. Uh, and uh, I was blessed enough to go see the world. Um, met a lovely lady by the name of Susan, and we got married. You know how people tell you when you're traveling, this like, oh, I'm going to catch up with you. I'll give you a call. You know, when I'm going to America, when I see you, I'll, I'll give you a ring. Uh, you uh -huh. know, all these sort of things. Uh, but lo and behold, how she found me, she found me. But um, that was a blessing. Uh, so I finished up my enlistment and decided to come and uh, live in Australia. So we packed up, relocated to Australia back in 1988. Showing my age now, Doc. Um, <laughs> Back in 1988, and um, yeah, haven't looked back. Haven't looked back from there, and um, it's been a blessing. It's been great. People are wonderful. It's, yes, it's a bit of a hike away from everything, but um, that within itself is probably also a blessing. <laughs> wow, you know. So, uh, uh, who inspired you? Uh, you know, convinced you to come in, coming in into the Navy. Well, my dad was um, my dad was in the military. My dad was my hero. Uh, he's uh, passed away, now, but, uh, but uh, my dad was my hero. Was he was a big guy. guy. He's and back in that time, there weren't too many opportunities uh, in our community for work, um, and not too many opportunities for further education. So. Um, I decided just to explore my options and I had a very influential teacher like a lot of us do that one teacher that stands out and you know she started to have conversations with me about maybe I should look at the military as an option you know my school grades were good everything else was good maybe I should look at doing that so I had a conversation with my parents um, and my dad of course was all for it and um, that started my road coaster on that ride Wow. You know, so uh, what are some of the lessons that you, that you learned in the military that you live uh, today by? Bro, I still get up the same time <laughs> every day. I make my bed <laughs> first thing. Uh, look, um, I've always been, as a kid growing up, I've always been very organized. Uh, I think being in the military just took me to that next edge um, of that. So I'm very organized in things that I actually do. I'd like to have those sort of measures of control in place. Um, but it's also taught me how to deal with people and, and engage with people. You know how it is, you, you sign up and you go in and you got people from all over the United States, um, different accents, different backgrounds, different upbringings and all of a sudden you're thrown together, you know, and all of you got to become a team, whether you want to or not, you got to make it happen. Okay. So it, it teaches you a lot about, people. it teaches you a lot about human beings, uh, the good, the bad and the ugly, but um, I've been blessed. There's been a lot of good. Wow. You know, so uh, yeah, I'm in the military, man, you learn uh, structure. And uh, just like you said, you, you get up every morning, make up your bed. We, it, we just, it's just programmed in us to do that. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the day is not not even right if you don't get up and make up your bed, you know. So I, I I tell you what, I, you know, I, I spent a, quite a bit of time over in Australia, and I love it, man. I mean, our station there. I mean, been back there a couple of times since then, and yeah. uh, I wish I could have had the opportunity to, uh, you know, live there. So can can you tell uh, our listeners and our, our viewers? Uh, what path led you to make Australia your home? Well, my, my a beautiful, beautiful continent. Yeah, my well, my my ex-wife is Australian, um, so um, yes, it was a one of those sort of situations, you know, where you're at work and you get a phone call that we need to have a chat when you get home, and I, I started going through my head, thinking, what have I done wrong, and Five or six times I came to the conclusion that I hadn't done anything wrong, but um, 
being being newly married, you don't want to hear those words. But <laughs> so, <laughs> when I got home, when I got home, the big question was like, would I consider relocating to Australia? Um, as my enlistment comes up to to its end, and I was like, yeah, of course. And I always had a good time here. People are beautiful. Um, uh, it's sort of a a beautiful blend between. Um, I guess sort of past cultural practices and that in modern day society. So um, it, work is good here, everything else, but it, it's not all about work. It's, it's about people, uh, it's about family, it's about community. It's about all those sort of things that we love and we, we cherish so much. Wow. It, it, and it is, man, and, and the country is so beautiful, man. I had an opportunity to travel pretty much all over. I think I hit all seven, I think seven to eight mm -hmm. different uh, barrels. And I really enjoyed my time in Sydney and, and in Perth. And yes. I was stationed over in Exmouth. I don't know if you remember that. Uh, yes, I do. <laughs> <laughs> what would you station at over there? Uh, I, I wasn't was stationed. I wasn't stationed here. Um, I was out of Del Coronado Island in, in San Diego and that. So, but we, we used to do a lot of training over here with, with their special forces and that sort of thing. Um, and um, prior to that, it was um, before the Gulf War was a Gulf War, you know, we used to come and do a, quite a bit of few exercise over here. And so Australia was our little R&R, &R, our rest and relaxation point. So we go there. Meet the dignitaries, do all the things we need to do. Absolutely. You know what? We're going to take a station break, but if you want to be part of this great conversation, 1 866 577 2473 or whichever platform you're watching it on, go to it, put your comments in. I promise I'll get uh, you up on the screen. So uh, remember, it's your life, and we'll be back shortly after the break. There's more stories of greatness to help you overcome adversity. Coming up on It's Your Life with James Cooley.
series of circles and cycles, phases and stages. These are your experiences that teach you the lessons of life. You can either ignore them or embrace them. Welcome to the James Cooley Show. It's your life. Dr. James Cooley is a motivational speaker, author, military veteran, and founder of the J.C. Cooley Foundation. Dr. Cooley is here to equip you to strive for greatness and overcome adversity. It's time to get equipped today for the challenges of tomorrow. Now, here's the host of It's Your Life, Dr. James Cooley. Hello, welcome back to the James Cooley Show. Uh, it's your life, and I got a, a fantastic guest here, Tony Moore, and uh, a little jealous he's over in Australia, you know, just, just enjoying, uh, <laughs> enjoying himself, you know, and uh, it brings back days, uh, my days of, of being there, you know. I had the pleasure of living over there for three years, so, you know, I, I know, man, it's just a beautiful country. You know, so if you want to be part of the conversation, one 577 2473 or go to uh, your comments on your platforms, whichever one you're watching on, and get the question in. I promise I'll get on to it. Tony, can you tell uh, our, our viewers and our listeners a little bit about your professional background? Okay. Um, as you know, um, ex-military, um, I when I came to Australia, I started working, uh, uh, doing community, community development work uh, with the indigenous community. Uh, helping them to find employment, uh, redirecting some of their uh, communities towards uh, small business enterprises and those sort of things. So I've done everything from lecture at university um, to doing community development work, uh, everything, uh, sales uh, <laughs> uh, and marketing, uh, fundraising for a number of uh, NGOs. Uh, and, and doing uh, social enterprises for them. So I've been doing a number of different projects and coaching basketball now because that's my one of my first loves. Wow. You know, speaking of basketball, you utilize the game of basketball uh, to educate, teach, encourage, and guide uh, mm -hmm. a lot of the, the, the young men and women over there. Yes. Can you tell us or uh, tell our audience a little bit about Hoops for Life and why you started that business? Yeah. Um, look, there was no doubt when I got here um, in, in Australia in 1988, there, there wasn't an overabundance of uh, people of color. So um, I used to hang out with a lot of the professional basketball players and, and played a little bit myself. So um, the way Hoops for Life started, when, when I got here, I started to notice a lot of the things that I faced when I was growing up uh, in New York was repeating itself here. And I could see some of the patterns that young people were doing and, and going and the practices they were having and saying, look, uh, you know, the one thing that has been constant in my life and, and helped me to actually learn more about people, engage with people in certain ways, and and to develop myself was was a game of basketball. I, I had some beautiful coaches that uh, our training session was more about life than it was about basketball. Um, in that case, it, it made us be better basketball players, but it also helped us to become better human beings and better people. So when I started that, I started with about 15 young people um, the parents just needed to have some sort of outlet for them. Um, they didn't have funds or anything like that to um, pay for their kids to be involved in organized sports and so forth. But they, the kids love basketball. Yeah, they were a little bit uh, yeah wayward and you know getting in trouble because they were bored, nothing to do, with sports and utilizing that energy on other activities that were negative. So once we got them around the court and I only did things the only way I knew. <clears throat> and I tell people I'm, I'm probably like a combination between uh, a drill sergeant, um, Coach Carter, a grizzly bear and a teddy bear. And sometimes, <laughs> all, and sometimes all four of them come out at the same time. So, <laughs> which is quite confusing for the kids, but um, yeah, so it, it's, it's, uh, strong love you know strict love but it's um it's love and it's giving that sort of direction and that so we started with those 15 kids quickly those 15 kids turned into about 45 um 
when I got up to about 120 young people showing up, I just thought, wow, um, I got to do something about this. I got to get I got to get better organized because, you know, one person, 120 kids um, showing up and it was it was great. And so I started structuring based on the programs that I was involved in and in some of the boroughs of New York. I, I just thought, yeah, that worked for me and it kept me, you know, off the street, out of trouble, all these sort of things. So I got involved with that. And that sort of laid the foundation for for Hoops for Life. So can you tell us uh, some of the, the programs uh, uh, that Hoops for Life provide to these uh, young, young men? Yeah. So like, like I said, when we started out, it was just a community engagement program designed just to you know, keep, keep young people off the streets and keep them involved. So uh, Hoops for Life now has grown into you know, a multifaceted sort of uh, organization that delivers quite a few different programs. Uh, we have a community engagement program still, um, uh, midnight basketball um, for, some, for some of the older teenagers um, that were wandering the street. We figure it's better to get them out there on the court, we feed them, play a game, of pick up, it's just pick up basketball around those hours so that they're not getting involved in those sort of activities. Um, we have a program in a women's prison uh, that we work through. Um, through the game of basketball, we teach a lot of the personal development skills around communication, all those sort of facets as well. Because for, for the women here, uh, uh, women, are <clears throat> women are being incarcerated at four times the rate of men here in Australia because there's not a lot of support program. Um, when we found out that the women, Adelaide Women Prison had a textile program that was making uniform, tracksuit pants, and um, all the sportswear for uh, all the prisons, men, women, children, prisons as well. So we connected with them and got them to make our uniforms uh, for our community pro program. Um, and from there, we started teaching them the game of basketball. So when they came out of prison, not only did they come into our community program and help provide some support for the young kids that were playing there, but they also started their own women's competition. And then they also, um, we would link them to employers in the community that did the same type of work that they were doing in the women prison. So we created a, an employment sort of strategy on the back end of that. On top of that, we go into schools. Uh, we work with education department throughout the country. We work with them um, at primary school or elementary school level, uh, all the way up through to secondary high school. Um, whole purpose of these programs is um, in the school is to reconnect young people back to education through the game of basketball. So um, for example, we will have young people on the court working out their shooting percentages in their heads. Um, and we got teachers on the sideline with their phones out trying to calculate and going, yay, they're right. And so, <laughs> so, well, so we would do that. We would work on angles, we would work on trajectory, and we explain how the game of basketball is nothing but math, all right? So being utilizing that as a platform to teach them math became really, really beneficial. Then, um, on top of that, we have uh, our program that is designed more for the athlete that's looking to go to university um, and the athletes that are looking to go professional. So there's a big mentoring and coaching process around that. There's a tutoring program around that to make sure that the grades are hitting the mark to get them the education that they want. And this year we just started our international program. So we're, we're bringing uh, players over for some of the African countries over to Australia to get them into an educational sort of program and to play basketball at the high, highest level as well. Wow. So you, you utilize the game of basketball in essence to, you know, like educate, teach, you know, like math and other things. And before they know it, they 
I mean, <laughs> they they like, wow, I can utilize this. Oh, yeah. uh, so that I think I think that's uh, great. And you, and you mentioned to me that's kind of disturbing about the the, the rate of women going to, this, to jail over that four times the rate of men. And uh, yeah. real quickly, I think we they have they have integration programs in the prisons naturally. Um, but a lot of those programs, um, whether it is uh, the traffic monitoring and all those sort of things, they're linked into the, the men's prisons. Uh, and not so many of these programs are very supportive of engaging women in that. So as soon as we mention kids and we mention sports, we're going to take a station break, but we're going to come back. We're going to pick it up. Cause this is interesting. So, hey, if you want to be part of this great conversation, all you have to do is just go to the comments uh, and put your question in, or just call, pick up the phone one eight six six five seven seven two four seven three. It's your life. We'll be back shortly after the break. There's more stories of greatness to help you overcome it. Really get a chance to know who you are, and once you know who you are. You truly know who you are. Love who you are. Love who you are. Your masterpiece. Love who you are. Love who you were born to be. Love, love me some me. That's what I'm talking about. When you leave high school, you gotta know today or tomorrow, hopefully today, what your plans are. Hopefully, yeah, there is no bad decision unless there is no plan. Create, collaborate, commit with confidence. Commit with what? Confidence. Commit with what? Confidence. In everything that you do. Dingley here, producer of the James Cooley Show, It's Your Life. And the new audio version of James' book, Country Boy, City Boy, A Journey That Ain't Over Yet, is a must-have. James shares his true life story of struggle and success in America. It's both a cautionary tale and a roadmap to achieving the American dream. Get the new audio version of Country Boy, City Boy, A Journey That Ain't Over Yet, by James Cooley on Amazon.com or wherever audiobooks are sold. Com. Life is a series of circles and cycles, wow. phases and stages. These are your experiences that teach you the lessons of life. You can either ignore them or embrace them. Welcome to the James Cooley Show. It's your life. Dr. James Cooley is a motivational speaker, author, military veteran, and founder of the J.C. Cooley Foundation. Dr. Cooley is here to equip you to strive for greatness and overcome adversity. It's time to get equipped today for the challenges of tomorrow. Now, here's the host of It's Your Life, Dr. James Cooley. Hello, welcome back to the James Cooley Show. It's your life, and I tell you, just sitting there having fun with my buddy uh, Tony Moore. And I see I got another one of my buddies just uh, listening in, into the show. I've got Doctor Sunshine Silas, uh, you know, over in Africa. He's he's, he's he's loving this show, and um, I can't wait to get him back on this show. I know you're li listening to it, <laughs> you know, so it may be, you know, it might be an initiative because of. Uh, some of the things that uh, you guys are doing, Dr. Sunshine, it might uh, have some correlation and, you know, some synergy with some of the things that Tony is doing. So uh, I would love to hear from you real soon. Hey, hey Tony, so we were talking about, you know, bringing uh, kids uh, over to Australia. And I know you send kids to the state, but we're going to talk about the state sports later. Yeah, but uh, the game of basketball, uh, just reading some of the stuff that we looked at, uh, you have this uh, philosophy 
you know, uh, the four major factors of basketball success and how we relate them to life. So uh, can you tell our viewers and listeners you know, uh, a little yeah. bit about those yeah. factors? Yeah, it's look, it's, I think it's really cool. The kids love it as well because um, the, the, the four major uh, components that we look for as a coach in basketball is, you know, shooting, turnovers, rebounding, and free throws. I mean, those are pivotal moments in a game where you can really leverage and progress yourself uh, ahead in that competition. So, and shooting, you know, you we're, we're always taking charge. Um, we're taking responsibility, accountability for ourselves. Um, we're not only looking to, to go for our dreams and, and help achieve our goals, but we're taking the initiative to do that. And we, we help young people to understand how to apply that initiative. And that's one thing that I've found doing this for, for some, so many years is um, these words that a lot of our young people hear, uh, like showing initiative, um, is, is more powerful than that. They need to understand, you know, the practice of it. How do you practice this? How do you demonstrate this? So shooting is all about that. Um, turnovers is, you know, things are not going to go as you plan them. I don't care how good you are and what you do. Things are not going to go as you put them, lay things out on the table. But um, when things go wrong, do you, do you have the resilience? Can you bounce back? Can you get on top of it? What do you have to do? in that quick moment during the game to assess and get back on it. Like, I, I'll give you this example. Every coach in the world expects that mistakes are going to happen or turnovers are going to happen. What coaches look for and how they measure a, a player is how they respond once they turn over the ball. If they're, are they going to drop their heads or, um, you know, it's going to take, three or four times up and down the court before they're back in the game. This, this is the practice that we apply to life is that when things happen, you, sometimes you, you don't have two or three weeks uh, to get your head back in the game or two or three days to get your head back in the game or even two or three hours. You have to learn how to apply that resilience. Rebounding is powerful in the game of basketball. It's, so, it's so also powerful in life. So you got to be ready to grab these little successes and these putbacks, we call them in the game. So you're going to get little opportunities on your way towards achieving your goal. But those little opportunities, don't pass them by. Don't disregard them. Don't take them for granted. Um, get the little quick putbacks. Get those rebounds. Um, hold the ball for a second. Catch your breath before you actually make an action. Look for the right people to connect with to get yourself to that next level. Um, and these are the practices we put in place for, for basketball. Um, and we'll help them to transition that into their day-to-day -day life. And the final one, free throws, you know, every now and then you get a lucky free shot, man. You just, <laughs> it's just you and the opportunity and you have to take it. Are you prepared to do that? You know, as a coach, we look at so many basketball players who don't practice their free throws. But, you know, and so they get given these free opportunities to go in there and capitalize and they don't do it. Uh, so we apply that straight to straight to everyday life is notice the be open to those free opportunities. Notice where they're actually coming from and take advantage of that to leverage on it for you trying to achieve your personal goals. So we do all of that and we give them tools to use to manage themselves and through that entire process. One of the biggest things that we see is a lot of anger management. We we see a lot of disconnect, lack of confidence, uh, self-esteem, um, self-belief. We see a lot of that. And um, you can you could actually have the young a young person who it's very well respected when amongst his, his or her peers, but totally lacks confidence. And, and they're putting on a whole mask in the show 
to, to actually see that. So we, we go through that process almost, and this is where the military comes in, uh, that process of stripping down, you know, getting to the core, what's the problem there? Let's address that problem. And now let's build up and let's, you know, give you the tools to help navigate through that process. So yeah, it's wow. pretty intense. <laughs> you know what, my eye, that was so well put together on shooting, turnover, rebound, and free throws. And and just like you, you related that to life, a lot of people can utilize this. Yes. And what they're doing because things are going to happen. Uh, and the good things and bad things, but yeah, you have to be able to be flexible and understand uh, that you have to stay on path in order to achieve your goals. You know, absolutely, so, absolutely. Hey, Paul, Tony, how do you link employment to into these programs? Well, most of um, most of the regions our programs are involved in, uh, even schools, um, they are in areas that you know challenge economically. And also um, we have a process where um, the education levels may not be as high as other other regions. So with our with our employment sort of strategy, what we tend to do is we we get we have a really we, we work really hard to build a strong network of employers to support these initiatives and these community sort of development strategies. So when we go to these employers, we, we get them to come in and volunteer. So a perfect example is right with um, our community project. We have a lot of young people that come there and we prepare meals for them, um, whether that's sandwiches or whatever might be the case, we prepare meals. Now, in order for us to do that in Australia, we have to have our food safety handling uh, certification to do that. So I, I get the parents who are unemployed in that region to focus on getting that certificate with us. And we said, I present it to him and say, look, in order for us to keep feeding kids, you got to get this certificate. So I know you're going to help us out and do it. And they come and do it. But then, um, and then we link into the industry and a lot of industries that use that skill set, everything from cafes and restaurants, uh, childcare facilities, even schools that actually prep food and meals, uh, hospitals, aged care facilities, and so when our network find out there's jobs there, we get the uh, employer or employer representative to come out and volunteer that night. And the person that we have deemed ready to be to transition into employment, we get that employer to go in. It's almost like a, a undercover boss. <laughs> <laughs> and and that. That boss is actually disguised as a volunteer and they work alongside of that person. We make all the activities they can perform. And that boss at the end is say, we ask, can they do the job or not? And we say, yeah, they can. And we transition them straight over into employment. And, and that has been working really well for us. Because, like I said earlier, a lot of our a lot of our people in the community don't have that confidence and self esteem, and the last thing they need is to be thrown in front of a spotlight, one on one, almost like an interrogation. <laughs> Say, <laughs> tell me about your skills and your capability. It's like, can't I just show you what I can do? And that's our approach to it. Can our guys just show you what they can do? And if you don't like what they do. Don't hire them. But the results is they love what they do because they they can they're capable of delivering it. Wow. Man, you are doing a lot of great things over there, especially linking that uh, to employment. And um, that, I guess that gives the um, the parents an opportunity to uh, get involved in a lot of these things as well. You know, so uh, yeah. I mean we we even we even hire some of our parents and all that with um, timekeeping, <clears throat> first aid officers, um, coaches, and all those sort of referees. And so some of them, that's their first paying job, is that. And from there, wow. they build that confidence. It's, it's all about giving back. And that's what you're doing over there, man. You're doing some great things. We might take a station break. 
Uh, but, uh, you know, when we get back, we're going to continue to talk to this great, great man. I mean, he's doing so many fantastic things, working uh, with the communities over in Australia. And we're going to talk about some of the other things he's doing, like sending some of the kids to the United States to go to school when we get back. So if you want to be part of the conversation, all you have to do with this, uh, pick up the phone, one 866 or go to the comments and ask this great man any question you want to. Remember, it's your life, and we'll be back shortly after the break. There's more stories of greatness to help you overcome adversity. to the James Cooley Show, It's Your Life, and I tell you, I am enjoying this conversation. I see that uh, we got a lot of questions that uh, we got to make sure that uh, uh, Tony get an opportunity to see and answer, and uh, uh, I see my great buddy, uh, Dr. Hall, is here. How you doing, sir? How you doing? I'm doing well, gentlemen. Just catching the show. I'm out in uh, the great state of Michigan, uh, Detroit right now, uh, and i uh, at a training conference uh, for business owners as brokers in the industry, uh, many of the leaders, but I wanted to jump on and and uh, commend my brother Tony for the great work he's doing. And one of my questions was, how can we be involved in the US with bringing some of the kids there in Australia to here and sending some of our kids there? Do you have anything in, 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 in uh, any programs like that going on with student visas and all that kind of stuff? Or is that something we can implement? Yeah, well, we're just, um, great to see you, Dr. Hall. Great to see you. Amen. But uh, we, we just started our international sort of program. And the whole focus is, is, is that, is collaborating in the sharing of uh, resources and, and so forth. But the one thing that I've noticed with working with these young people is their ability to collaborate very quickly. And, and some of the innovative approaches that they come up with just in the game of basketball and education, life, everything. And so we just started getting, a, we have a group of schools here in Australia that are really open to that. They, they have boarding uh, capability and those sort of things as well. Um, they have worked with international students in the past so um, that is something that we're, we're currently doing now. We've 
We've got one young man that is actually going to university here uh, in Australia from Nigeria. And, and we have another five uh, young people that will be going and completing their high school uh, or secondary school uh, studies here in Australia. So we, of course, would like to do the, the opposite. We, we've asked, helped young people get to prep schools in the U.S. and, and those sort of things. Um, but yeah, to expand that program more so, I guess I need to find someone on the ground like me in the U.S. that we can co connect with and collaborate. What we've been doing currently is using some of the professional players and their agents that we know and have worked with for a while to say, hey, he's got a brother. He has a sister. They're ready to actually do this, this, and this. And that's how we've been working that process. Gotcha. So to it, I'm sorry to interject. I'm going to run back into it. But I wanted, wanted you to pose a question. I'm meeting with uh, the CEO, uh, Matt Ishba here at UWM, and he just purchased the Phoenix Suns and the Phoenix Mercury basketball teams. So to know what you would look for in a program, having someone be similar to yourself here in the U.S., uh, he has a facility. There's 9,000 employees here at the center that I'm at, 9,000 employees. And wow. they have a full-on uh, gymnasium with pretty much have 40 teams can be playing at the same time. Um, so this facility is on 20 acres. It's very impressive. But more importantly, I'm quite sure he's interested in knowing how to align programs like yourself. So if you put a couple of questions together, I'll be with Matt tomorrow and would love to be able to see if there's some kind of collaboration we can do um, internationally. But gentlemen, you guys have a great day. I just wanted to chime in. I'll be in Atlanta, I think on Thursday and spending a couple of days there business-wise. Um, and then return him to California. So, Doc, I'll be seeing you soon, brother. Hey, man, I'll be seeing you in a few days, man. <laughs> yeah. All right, gentlemen. You guys take thank care. You. Enjoy the rest of the show. Hey, thank thanks, you. Blessings. Hey, Tony, you got a, a question uh, from Josh uh, Goldsmith. Yeah. That says, how, how, Tony, JC, how many people are working with your organization? What are your plans for expansion? Okay, yeah, we, we've been very blessed in that sort of space. All my coaches and facilitators that runs our programs are previous participants in the program. So um, our lead coach and facilitator, um, I started working with him when he was nine years old, and he's, he's 23 now. So he's done his studies and come back. So currently, we have, currently we have we have 36 employees, uh, that 36 employees that are actually working. I just brought on two more new guys here with me in Tasmania that will be expanding the program here and running it. But uh, yeah, it's um, our plans for, and strategies for growth and expansion. Um, I've already met with uh, multiple education departments. Um, each state, of course, have their own education department. And we're expanding the programs within schools considerably. Um, and we're also looking at acquiring some facilities that we can expand our community project. So if we can have the, reinf the reinforcement component in the community and at the same time have the education and, and development, personal development component within the schools, they will dovetail into each other quite well. You know, so one thing when I was talking to you a couple of weeks ago, and uh, that's impressed me was doing when they playing these basketball games and um, you had a no cell phone policy. I'm talking about that's with the parents and, and everybody. Can you tell? Oh, oh yeah, I'm, I'm quite, um, I'm quite boisterous. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm quite vocal when it comes to that. The game, you know, the game is only 40 minutes and the, the young people we have out there training and participating, they're, Yes, they 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 love it that I I and um, my coaches appreciate what they're doing on the court, and they acknowledge that. But all the kids they just want mom and dad to just celebrate them for that forty minutes. So I have a no cell phone policy, and I will literally stop the game and. 
give you a personal file to remove that phone and focus on your kids. And <laughs> if you're not if you're not cheering loud enough, I will stop the game. And I'll call a timeout and I'll send the kids over to teach their parents how to cheer properly. And then <laughs> we'll reassume the game and we'll continue playing. And and look, it, I do it in a humorous manner most of the time, but um, <laughs> it, it's, it's meant to actually raise focus and light on it is that those are the moments your child remembers, you know? And we all seen the TikTok and stuff on social media. The kids are there at the school performing and they spot their parents and they're, they, they just light up. These kids are the same, you know? They just need that one moment. And if you can't spare 40 minutes for your own child, then and you come to my program, I'm going to get you. <laughs> man, I love it, man. I love it. I love I'm it. I'm going to get you. Yeah. <laughs> hey, 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 Tony, now, you, you, great things that you're doing. You have sent over 3,000 kids uh, uh, to the United States or other, other countries uh, uh, for education. Uh, can you tell our viewers and listeners a little bit about that? Yeah, well, look, it's, it's quite simple. We go straight to the head. Um, the sports directors of, of these universities um, and some of the JUCOs and, and I mentioned earlier prep schools, um, we, we help these young people to put together a profile um, on them as a person and them as a player and them as a student because those are three components that any school is, is looking at. You can be a great player, but you can have a bad attitude and the school doesn't want to get involved with you. Um, so we look at those three components and we help them to compile that. We even help them put some uh, film together uh, that the coaches can see, not only just them playing, but also them engaging in their community and some of the things that they're actually doing. So those are big points that we, we do. Uh, I'm with a network of about 200 uh, coaches and um, universities and schools that we we constantly link to in doing that. And it costs our parents nothing because there's a few organizations here in Australia that charge anywhere from 15 to $20,000 to do it. Because the other side of that is the fundraising. We, we do, we're constantly fundraising uh, to generate revenue, to um, give sponsorship to these young people to get them over to that next point. Wow. You know, uh, down to the last couple of minutes of the show, man, this has been a magnificent show. If uh, Tony Moore could go back and talk to a younger version of Tony Moore, what advice would you give him? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, I wish I started this earlier. I wish I started this early. Uh, the the more that I've been working with young people and, and, and people say, yeah, you give a lot into the community. Um, the, these young people give me so much. They give me so much. And uh, yeah, it's beautiful. You know, we, we have university coaches, uh, just saw a question pop up. We have university coaches that come over to Australia and run camps. Um, so we're, we're currently already doing that. Um, we're trying to get some professional NBA players to come over and like run a combine, but some are better players, all these sort of things. So the doorways are starting to open up and we're starting to get a lot more uh, professional organizations engaging. Hey, hey, Tony, I want to thank you, man. You know, you got to open an invitation up to come on my show anytime. You know, so I want to thank you for all the great things you're doing. Thank you for taking time to come on this show and uh, continue to do all those great things. I'd like to thank uh, uh, Dr. Michelle Cooley for putting together another a great program. Uh, most importantly, I'd like to thank my listeners and viewers for taking the time to tune in to the James Cooley Show. You know, I always dream big, think big, and be big at everything you do. We'll be back tomorrow, same time, same place. It's your life on Dr. James J.C. Cooley. Thanks for joining us for The James Cooley Show. It's your life. To learn more about Dr. James Cooley.